start the recording. So, okay. And uh, today, yeah, that's me. So um, in this short presentation, I will give you a first taste uh, how we can use the Fabric 2.2 uh, version and uh, with today's agenda. So this is a beginner tutorial. Um, we start with an uh, Ubuntu 20 uh, server, which a private server or a droplet or whatever you want to use. You can use it on your uh, own laptop, maybe with a virtual box or with a digital ocean droplet or with an AWS virtual machine or whatever. So the only important part is that we use the an Ubuntu uh, 20 version. And in this first step, we are going, I will show you how you can install um, the needed requirements. So we need some requirements for Fabric and uh, then we install the Fabric binaries and sample with Fabric samples. And with this, in this Fabric samples, there is a new test network and we will, I will show you how you can use this test network to test your chain code to play a little bit and to study and to observe some things in the fabric world. And uh, these are parts from the second uh, point today. So uh, we install the first network, then we try to understand what is installed. So I think that's an important part that you know what is installed what is the chain code which is installed, how this chain code works, and so on. And then we can interact with this chain code and with this network. And for this, I have provided some examples so we can do it step by step and you can uh, easily follow these uh, instructions. All these instructions you can find here in the references. And um, we have here some, uh, all my instructions are here in this uh, GitHub repo. Then here, uh, this is the reference from the agenda. So uh, we have a um, global agenda for this series so that you will see what will come in the next sessions. But this is a little bit um, under construction. So we change this a little bit. So when you want to know what is in the, uh, on the next session, then you uh, go to this, this uh, Google Docs and then you can see uh, what will be part of the next agenda. So uh, there's a question. Could you just quickly mention the main features of 2.2 compared to 1.4 that we previously looked at? Um, yeah, so um, for this, this is a good page. So I don't know any, any new features, but um, I think uh, what I have seen now is that um, the basic system, I think the basic system is the same, but there are some, some points are changed. Um, and one point is, I think the image size of the Docker images are changed. There is a switch to Alpine uh, images and they are much slower and uh, much smaller. And you will see uh, when we install the network that th this is very, very quick and uh, faster than we have seen it in a one uh, for nine version. And so, but that's a small point. Another good uh, or important point uh, which we will tackle also in, in the next time is how you can install the chain code. And with the new chain code uh, lifecycle management, you have uh, something called uh, the governance of the chain code. So when you have um, a organization, when you have a network with uh, different organizations, so you can imagine organization one, organization two and organization three, and then you have a chain code and you want to install the chain code, then you need the confirmation from all these organization admins. And for this process, they have introduced a new lifecycle uh, management. And uh, this is a little bit different uh, from the uh, kind which is used in the 1.4 version. So in the 1.4 version, you have to install the chain code and then you instantiate it and then uh, you can use the chain code. 
And um, in the 2.2 version, and there is um, this new approved uh, approach where you can uh, more, where you have more control over the governance of the chain code. And uh, also in the chain code, when you install the chain code, so in 1.4, uh, there is a small delay when you first install the chain code container. So in FreeWebKits, when you install the chain code, uh, then the chain code is running in a separate Docker container. It is called the chain code container. And this chain code container is uh, started on the first uh, invoke request. And um, so for the first request, you have a small delay until this chain code container is built and uh, is ready for the usage. And this is also changed uh, in the 2.2 version. So this chain code container is built uh, in a step prior, and then you don't have this short delay. And another improvement what I have seen is that uh, when you use CouchDB, uh, there's, uh, I don't have mentioned this before, but uh, so it stands in the documentation is that there is a performance, uh, there are some important performance improvements and so on. And, um, but a detailed uh, uh, list of all changes uh, from the uh, Fabric uh, from the version 2.2, uh, from 1.49 to 2.2, you can see it here in the in the uh, with the docs. There is a release on this on this release page. There is a page where you will find all uh, changes, and you can go step by step through every block to the, in this in this document. So and then you see uh, what is changed. So I think uh, to wrap up. The, the process is, I think it's, it's the same, it's basically the same, but something has changed. Um, also, one change is so when you, when you do a chain code development, so the process to this dev mode, this chain code dev mode, where we have used these three terminals and uh, um, to, to test our chain code, this process is also changed now in the, in the 2.2 version, uh, which I have seen yesterday. So, and so there are small changes, but uh, I think powerful, powerful changes. And um, a change what we have seen today is that there is no build your first network uh, script anymore. So this is changed to this to the system test net network or that, to the test network implementation. And um, I think so for my. Um, I used this yet for, for two weeks, I think. And uh, what I have seen is that the, the examples are really good. I think they are better structured and um, it's uh, more easier to learn, I think, than in the previous version. But I don't know. So maybe it's because I know the one, uh, 1.4 version and so it's a little bit similar or it's easier for me to understand what is new. But um, but these are the changes, I think. So the main changes, which are uh, which you can see now. And when it comes to this fabric, it is. So I think everybody in this in this room or in this class should know what is fabric. So fabric is a permission blockchain system, and uh, yes. Yeah, and uh, in this in this world, we have different. Uh, I think worlds or different. Uh, fields. So we have here the fabric, the fabric network. So that's basically what we're saying this is, this is that what we are doing today or in the next couple of uh, meetups. So we have a network, we have a network components, we have an order, um, we have order organizations, we have um, and, and peer organization and, and the second organization or a third organization. So uh, and then we have a, a channel. So the channel is a, is, is, is a element which uh, is a secure place where we can install chain code and through this channel and uh, the permission system, which is implemented in Fabric, we can um, interact with this network and uh, 
for this, we have a chain code. And the chain code is the so-called asset transfer basic chain code. This is the default uh, or basic chain code, which is used in the new version. So, and this part is done maybe by system administrators or by operators, I think. And then we have a developer section. So this, this part here is for the administrator or for operators or for DevOps or for people they are handling the Docker containers, they are responsible for the infrastructure and so on. And uh, the second part here is the favorite client or you can say it's a backend application. So, and uh, there are some officials and unofficial SDK. SDKs stands for Software Development Kit. And uh, with this SDKs, we can interact with uh, the Fabric Network. And one important uh, part I have uh, forgotten uh, in the difference between 1.4 and 2.2 is that there is no CLI container anymore needed. So I think that's an important part for today. When we install this system here today with the Fabric Network, with the test network, we will see there is no CLI container. So I think that's a uh, change from 1.4 to 2.2, uh, which we should know that there is no CLI container. So the, the peer commands, the order commands, this config um, or crypto commands um, can be called directly from the console and will be installed through the Fabric samples uh, in the ins installation process. So that's also a change from 1.4 to 2.2. And for the backend here, for the Fabric client section, so we have official SDKs, Node.js and Java. So we will do it with Node.js. Uh, in, in, my, in my sessions. And, but there are also unofficial SDKs uh, from Golang and Python. So I think you can try this, but uh, they are not so robust, I think, or I don't know why they have an unofficial uh, status. So, but these are the uh, client SDKs, uh, which is new. And um, yeah, another point that I have, uh, uh, forgotten to say is that for chain code development, there is uh, in 1.4, we have seen that there is the shim API. And uh, with this shim or skim API, we have developed the Go chain code. And when we use Go for chain code development, then we have this shim. And uh, in 2.2, there is a new contract API. And that's also a change uh, in the 2.2 version. So, and, uh, but I think uh, you can use both versions, um, but uh, the new version is with this contract API. So, but from the Fabric client side, so this could, this could be a web developer, for example. So this, this could be a web developer, uh, which is uh, uh, familiar with Node.js or a backend developer, which is familiar with Java or Golang or Python, for example. So, and this is the second world. This is the second world. So we have here the system administrator part, then we have to install the chain code. So that's a, a thing that the chain code must be developed, I think, from a developer. And uh, when the chain code is ready, the chain code has to deliver to the administrator and the administrator has to install the chain code and um, in the system. And the front end application, uh, or the backend application here. Uh, this could be a completely different person. So this could be anybody who is responsible for Node.js, Java, and so on. And then we can, with this, we can build a REST API, maybe with Express, for example, and um, build a bridge between a front-end application um, with JavaScript, for example, or with PHP or whatever you want. So maybe you are familiar with Angular or FuJS or Ember, Backbone Shares or whatever you want as a front-end application. And um, this front-end application can query uh, the Node.js uh, application, for example, with a REST API or with a gRPC uh, connection or whatever. And then you have here a completely different person again. So, and uh, 
when we have seen this the whole picture so now today we are going to install this system so with an ottawa that's like the test network here so we have an ottawa organization with one ottawa and uh, this is also a change from 1.4 to uh, 2.2 in the 2.2 version there is um, no so well, i can say solo ottawa is duplicated and I think um, also Kafka and Zookeeper are duplicated, and the only stable ordering system is Raft. And uh, but Raft is a crash fault tolerant system, so you need more than one orderer to be crash fault tolerant. And uh, in this fabric network, in the test network, there is an implementation where you can use a single Raft ordering system. So in the end, when we have installed the system, we will only have two containers, one for the Ottawa, one for PNUL from org one, and one for PNUL org two. And that's it. And that's also um, a change from 1.4 to 2.2, because uh, the, the numbers of uh, containers are limited or reduced. So, okay, so. And now a short overview of what we have to install in this process. So I think the installation pro process is very easy. So when we start with an Ubuntu box uh, 20, uh, so that's our uh, starting point. So I have prepared an Ubuntu 20 digital ocean droplet. Uh, and uh, based on this, we have to uh, update the system and so on. So the basic setup, and then we can install some helper tools for us. So maybe tree is a good uh, choice to install. So with tree, we can uh, uh, we can list the folder structures or recursive folder structures, and especially for the um, membership service provider. So we will see which certificates uh, we have. Uh, and so on. So to inspect this a little bit more. And then JQ is also a, a nice tool. So this is a command line a JSON parser. And uh, a lot of, or, yeah, I think, um, I think a lot of uh, results which you receive from uh, the Fabric system is in JSON format. And um, also when you uh, query the uh, block configuration or whatever, then you will receive a JSON format. And with JQ, you can pass this uh, uh, JSON format, and then you have a nicer uh, print on the, uh, on the console, for example. So these are also some uh, helper tools, but not needed, but it's, helpful and useful. Also TMUX, terminal multiplexer, but this is installed by default. So with the terminal multiplexer, we can have in one terminal uh, different uh, panels. So we don't have to open uh, more than one SSH terminals to uh, the virtual machine. And then we have to install Docker. So Fabric is Docker-based. So we need Docker itself and Docker Compose. To, to use it. And then we need a Golang. So when we do uh, chain code development, so uh, the, the first languages, so are the primary languages for chain code development, I think so, but it's only my opinion, is Golang for the chain code and in the client application, it's Node.js. So Node.js is, is very popular. It's like uh, JavaScript and a lot of people know it. So because uh, that's it's also easy uh, to use, and uh, when it comes to REST API, you can use uh, a lot of uh, frameworks like Express.js or Next.js or whatever to uh, develop really cool software. And then we have to install the Docker images. So and uh, binaries. So and the, the fabric samples. So and that's um, also a single step. And this is very fast. So because the Docker images are through the Alpine Linux uh, implementation, this is very uh, short, oh, small. Okay, so, and now I will skip this. 
So I'm done. I hope I can switch this again. To this. So can you see my uh, desktop again? You should see a terminal on the left side, on the right side. Yes, perfect. So then we can do this a little bit aside. So 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 a little bit larger. So and uh, here on the left side you can see this is the step by step introduction uh, or tutorial uh, where you can. Uh, follow these steps and then and uh, these uh, these steps are uh, on the github uh, and the, the link is in the presentation so now here we have a um, ubuntu Trenty machine so for this demonstration so i use a droplet from digital ocean so and uh, the configuration of this is one cpu two gigs uh, uh, RAM and uh, the 15 gigabyte uh, storage. So that uh, is a 10 US dollar uh, machine. So I think that's enough to test and uh, to uh, do some experiments. But as I have mentioned, you can do it also with a virtual box or with uh, other virtualization software if you want. So. Okay, so the first thing when it comes to uh, installation of such a system, uh, we, have to, we have to look that we are um, up to date. So this is the part I have prepared. So to, uh, that we don't have to restart the machine. Yeah, and there is of course a So I hope I'm not on the wrong machine. So, so no. So um, then, okay. So then we, inst we install our helper tools. Pre and Jacob. So in my case, um, I would like to set the time zone correct. So now we're in Vienna. And that's the time. So these are some basic operations steps. So, and then the first step is to install uh, Docker. So these instruct instructions came from the official Docker repository or Docker documentation. So these some points to copy in.
And then we can finally install Docker itself. And then we can check if Docker is installed. Yes. So I think Docker version 19 is a uh, current version. Uh, yes, I can share this. Um, So these are the instructions. So, okay. Um, so Docker is installed. The next step what we need is Docker Compose. So the reference here also, you can find the reference from the official Docker site. And there are some commands we have to copy for this. Um, These so are execution rights and that's it. So then we should have a Docker Compose version. So now I think the main parts are done. So then we have can install uh, Go. And uh, this is maybe also a change. So in the 2.2 version, the one the 14 version uh, is recommended here. That's the, uh, the latest version. Uh, and we can install this here. So, so with this command, we, with the uh, we, w get a command, we can uh, get the, the, the go version and then uh, we uh, we uh, uncompress the uh, go go packages to use a local uh, to the user local directory, and then we have to set some environment variables uh, for the go installation. In the we can do it in profile uh, dot profile or in the push as rc file. So that's a little bit uh, depends on you. So when we do this. We can use the VI to do this. And so here, that's a, um, a copy here. Also, uh, the path to the uh, Go pin file, to the Go pin directory, and also uh, to the fabric samples. So in the, la in the last step, we are going to install the fabric samples, and they will be installed in, on, in the path root fabric, fabric samples pin. And uh, we need uh, this uh, path, this pin directory also in the path. The reason is in this pin directory uh, are the um, binaries, for example, the peer command is there. And that's new in the 2.2 version because there is not a, a CLI uh, container. And we need the go path. So the go path is the uh, fabric directory. This, this directory uh, will be uh, created uh, in a minute. So, and that's it. So, and with the source command, uh, we can um, reload the, uh, the environment variables and when we check uh, Go version, then we should see Go version Go 
1.14. And uh, this is also a good command. So printenv, printenv uh, prints you all environment variables, which are currently used. And uh, when we use the web command on this, then we can, we should see our changes to the, uh, our changes from the uh, profile file. So we see here the path is changed yeah, and we see here the go path to root. Uh, and this is a very good uh, uh, command to see which environment variables are set. And Fabric uh, used a lot of environment variables uh, when it comes to the uh, peer command, for example, uh, or in the Docker compose file, we have to set uh, environment variables to um, express some uh, settings or uh, express some uh, paths to certificates and so on. So to check which environment uh, variables are now set, uh, that's, that's a good technique to know how you can do it. And also the source command is important, I think. So we can, um, to provide uh, a, cont a continuous copy and paste from environment variables, we can um, collect all needed environment variables to a uh, situation or to an organization, for example, in one uh, script. And then we can uh, call the source command and then with the, with the script. And then we can have one command and uh, all environment variables in this file will be passed to the environment now. And so it's a little bit easier to work. We will see it uh, a little bit later how we can do this. But these are um, Lin Linux techniques. So I think every system administrator has its own way to do uh, this. Okay, so Go is installed. And the next thing we need uh, is uh, Node.js. So um, this for the, for the uh, SDK. And um, I think uh, Node.js 10 is allowed to use and uh, 12. So, but we are going to use the, the new version. And for this, we can uh, download the install script. For this. So, and here we go. This is the script. And we can call this. I don't need this sudo command here because on this machine, you see it, I'm a root. So, and then we have to call go get install Node.js. So that's it, and with uh, node uh, minus VPC version 12, 12 is uh, installed. And now you have everything installed uh, as a preparation, which you need to make a network to uh, create the client and so on. So there is not so much to do uh, for the first installation process. And then the last step is uh, only to install the Fabric binaries and samples and Docker images. And for this, we can call this curl command and uh, everything will be installed. But uh, here you can see, uh, but when, when we call this command in this way, so the latest version will be installed. So when, when we try to use this um, setup for the 1.49 uh, version, uh, which is I think the latest from the 1.4 version, then you have to call um, here this uh, uh, version numbers. So there is a, a short syntax. So the first, uh, number here is the fabric version. So when, when you try to install the 1.46 version, as I have done here, uh, then you have to 
can say, okay, I want Fabric version 1.46, I want the Fabric certified authority version 1.4, and the third party version here, that's me, uh, is, is for uh, the CouchDB. So that's the CouchDB version. And uh, so, and you can look which version you want, and uh, then you can here exp explicitly uh, define which version you're going to install. And when you leave everything uh, as it is, then the latest version will be installed. So, and that's what we are going to do now. So you see the version 2.2.1 will be installed now. And uh, I think that should be very fast because of the small uh, Docker image size. And we will see this in a moment. And now we are ready. And you see the Docker images are installed. And uh, yeah, now we can, this works. Um, so, Maybe this. Hmm. Okay, so this is not working. Okay, we leave this for a moment. Ah, I don't know. So I did a mistake. So I did a mistake. So I have forgotten to create the favorite directory. So, and that's here. So, okay, it's not so easy to speak and <laughs> and, uh, and and doing and doing, speaking and doing is not so easy. So, okay, uh, but um, that's not a problem. So the only thing what we have to do now is to change the profile here. So we, change the go part here. Then we have to change this. And we have to change this. So, so it's better. And you see, now it works. So with peer version, we see the peer 2.21 is installed. So, okay, what we have missed, we have missed this step here. So, so, but that's, that's only, a, um, yeah, for, to have an, an folder here and it's called Fabric and in this folder, we have the Fabric samples installed. So, but th it doesn't matter. So that's only, and now with the change of the environment variable, uh, we have uh, uh, done the correct installation. Okay, so with this in mind, uh, we can try the installation. And before we are going to do this, we switch back to the presentation. So can you see the presentation again? I hope so. And uh, this is a short overview of the uh, test network. So this is the default network. And with this network, we can test and uh, do some things. And, uh, and also uh, we can learn from this 
examples were were uh, a lot of I think so and and uh, the network is here this is in called a consortium and uh, as you have mentioned we have an order organization uh, with a single rough paste ordering system we have a peer organization one and the peer organization two also with uh, one peer organization with peer uh, with with a peer um, container, yeah? and uh, so in fact we have three or three Docker containers: one for the order system and uh, one for organization one as a peer zero, and one for the organization two as a peer zero. And then we have a channel by default. The the name of the channel is the same like in 1.4. That's my channel, but we can. Um, also set a custom channel, for example, the channel one, as I have done in my example. And then a basic chain code will be installed. This is the asset transfer basic chain code. And this is, uh, I think, a replacement uh, for the, uh, apps, the app store uh, chain code or the uh, chain code example 02. Uh, these are some names for the default chain code in the 1.4 uh, system. So, and with this chain code, so maybe the term chain code is also a little bit changing, I think. Um, I, so from the beginning, it was the term chain code. And uh, the chain code is that what in other blockchains a smart contract uh, is. And um, now I think in more and more documentations, also in the official documentations, a little switch from the term chain code to smart contract. So, but smart contract and chain code is the same here uh, in the fabric world. And uh, I think there is a change from the term chain code to the term smart contract. And, and this is the default asset transfer basic. Uh, smart contract or chain code. And this chain code has these methods. So we can group this together to two uh, groups, one for the query command and one for the invoke command. So, and uh, for the query, and that's also an important part, uh, when we do uh, a query, we don't, uh, we query a particular beer, for example, the beer uh, zero from organization one. And uh, for this query, we have to set some environment variables. And uh, when we do an invoke, then we have to give more environment variables to the command because uh, we need a, um, a consent. So, and then it comes to the endorsement policy, how much endorsement we need. So in this system, it's like that when you don't, so the default uh, configuration is that you need the majority. So the majority of the organizations must uh, confirm to this transaction. And um, for this, you need an invoke command. For this, you will see, you will need an orderer and you need uh, um, a lot of commands for the peers and the TLS uh, certificates and so on. So, but for the query, that's, for the first, for now, it's important to, to note that for a query, we don't uh, query um, the order, for example. So we query a particular peer. And for the invoke, we have to use an order to invoke this uh, transaction. So, and the query functions here we can use is get all assets, and uh, you will receive a uh, JSON uh, response with all assets and you can read one particular asset. So, and that's also an, an interesting uh, term asset. So what does it mean an asset? So an asset is anything you, you're going to store uh, into the blockchain and an asset has a value. So, and that's it. So you have an asset that's a name, a key, the key stands for every, for anything and you have a value. And the value can be a number, a name, an object, or whatever. So, and uh, this value will be uh, serialized and uh, converted in a, a byte stream, and this byte stream represents then the value. 
and uh, this is the asset. And um, so, and uh, when we have in this example, so we will see then the asset, so we can give the assets a name or a number, and then we can query uh, the assets to see the latest state of this asset. And as you, as you know, in the, block, in the blockchain system, you cannot um, uh, remove uh, this asset. So when you change this asset, a new version is created and you have a last state from this asset and you have uh, previous states. You can have as many as you want previous states. Uh, this is also called the history of an asset. And, um, but when you query the asset, you will only get uh, the uh, world state. This is called the world state. So this is the, the latest state of the asset. So we can say that an asset is anything you would like to store in the blockchain. It's like a key and the value. You can also say it's a key and the value store, but with a state. And uh, when you uh, update this asset, then we can see here, we have, you can see we have an update asset. We have a transfer asset. So that's also an, an update, uh, but uh, in the update asset here, uh, the whole asset uh, can be changed. And uh, in the transfer asset, I think only the owner of the asset uh, is changed, but it, this depends on the chain code. So, but this is only in this example. So, and when you delete the asset, then the, the asset will be deleted. And, uh, but the previous versions uh, are all stored in the, in the blockchain. So, and these are the functions which we are going uh, to use. And we can do this uh, from the command line. So, and now this was the short overview. And then, uh, so, and to start this network, um, we have to switch in the for examples directory. And you see here the structure from this directory. But, and that's also, uh, this is also changed. Uh, you see here um, the other folders. So, and you see uh, the test network, you see a test application. And, uh, but you have also seen here, uh, you can see the chain code directory. This is a directory where other chain code is um, uh, provided here. Uh, and uh, in the upcoming sessions, we can uh, use this chain code here to install a second channel or try other uh, chain codes, how uh, they work. And, and here is the uh, as a transfer basic uh, chain code uh, folder. So, and you have here um, a lot of different uh, versions. Uh, I will show it. Uh, and you see here, and you see here, uh, the, uh, so for the, for the chain code, you have a Go version, you have a Java version, you have a Java, JavaScript version, uh, and you have a TypeScript version uh, here as well. So, and, um, and it's the version we are going to install. So, and this also changed here from, from the, from 2.4 to 2.2, that we have uh, the favorite samples in a little bit different uh, structure. And yeah, so, and what we are going to do now is we go in the test network. And here, everything is provided. So the only thing uh, you can look here with the help command to see uh, which commands we can do. So we have different combinations where you can try and test uh, different uh, uh, things. So you can start uh, a single, uh, a simple blockchain. Um, you can start uh, a blockchain with uh, CouchDB. Uh, you can start a blockchain with uh, Certified Authority. And that's also, I think, a new part, but I, um, this is what I have to uh, look into, into a little bit more. I have read that uh, when you start the, the uh, the test network with the CA option, then uh, the crypto material uh, will came from this certified authorities and not from cryptogram uh, from the cryptogram tool uh, as it's uh, in the 1.4 uh, 
9, uh, 9 version. So that could be also a change, but I don't have, I don't have this uh, uh, tested. So I, I think I have read about this and uh, this is something I have to look if this is really uh, in this way. And with this command, you can test uh, different scenarios and uh, we will try here the, the, the simplest way. So when we try to bring up the network, so then uh, we have to create it. We have to, uh, with the up command, we have to uh, start this network, which we have seen uh, before in the, in the slides. And then we can say in the same command, create a channel uh, with uh, the name uh, channel one. So, and when we do this, and everything is okay, then you see that this uh, looks good. And now the, the, the network will be uh, generated and the channel, channel one will be created. And also this channel will join to the peer. So and you see this in these log commands, so uh, organization one and organization two, and then we have successfully joined channel one. And so now, and then we can see with a Docker PS command and we see here, okay, something is wrong. And you see, let me make this a little bit larger. And you see, we have only these three Docker containers here. So we have the order container, we have the peer zero container for org one and org two example.com. And uh, we don't have a CLI container. So I think that's the uh, most difficult, the most difference for now uh, in the, uh, from 1.4 to 2.2. And yeah, so the network is running. And then we have to deploy the chain code. So, and uh, that's the second step. So, and uh, with deploy chain code without, without any command, then this simple uh, basic chain code will be installed. And we have said, we have used the channel one. So, and then we can say, okay, uh, the basic, the default basic chain code uh, is, in, is installed in the in channel one. And that's also new. So um, some binaries are do uh, downloaded. So for the first, on the first time, so some Go packages. And now you can see a little bit about this new lifecycle chain code install process here in the in, in the lock command. This this is something we are going to uh, invest a little bit more in the next session. So where I have uh, uh, prepared a, a presentation. Uh, about this life cycle, how we can install this and uh, do the whole process, uh, not in the script, so a little bit by hands-on, so that we can uh, see what, what happens uh, under the hood, uh, under these scripts. And we can learn a lot of these uh, scripts, so, and uh, then we understand more how the things work together uh, in this system. But this network script, is a script where you can uh, test and and play. So and I think it's very easy uh, to do this. And uh, when you look into the script and when you look in the scripts which are called in this script, then you will see how the things uh, fit together. And here you can see this approval process. So you see that's also this check commit readiness. That's also new here in this version that's part of the new life cycle chain code management. So, and then I think we are ready. So, and yeah. Um, so the Docker containers, are running in the background now. So we don't see any Docker containers uh, until we use Docker PS. So, and now you see a little bit more. Um, 
but we can use also uh, the Docker Compose command. And uh, Docker, as I have mentioned, Docker is, uh, Fabric is based on Docker, and uh, we have installed also Docker Compose. So the question is uh, where the Docker Compose files uh, is coming from, because when we look into this directory, uh, we don't see any Docker Compose uh, YAML file here. So, and uh, for this, this is also a little bit change. So uh, this Docker Compose file is in this Docker command here, uh, in this Docker folder. So I'm going to see tree Docker. So it's the first time we use the tree command here. So now you see for what is tree uh, helpful. So, and you see here, that's the, uh, YAML, this Docker file, which is used in the script. And then we can uh, also check this command. So, but that's not uh, related to Fabric. So that is a uh, Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, things. So, and here see, you see the same, but with the Docker PS command, you can see here uh, that there are some chain code containers here. And you see here, these chain code containers. Okay. So we have here chain code container for uh, organization two, dev P0. So that's the, 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 the mark or the, the, the name for this. Yeah. And here the same for the organization one. So, and now we are ready. So the system is running and now we can start to interact with this. And for, for this, we can uh, use uh, this terminal multiplexer, for example. So, and then uh, it's helpful to see the logs here. Yeah. So, and then you split this panel. You can do this with uh, Control P, and then um, the single, uh, the double quotes. Then so you can split uh, the the terminal session here in two panels. So in the first panel we have the log output, and in the second panel we do our queries. So and uh, to switch between, you can Control P Q and C zero null. Zero one, one and then you can uh, switch between. And um, so, uh, and uh, to query, so we have to, in this, in this example for the, for the chain code, so we have to initialize the ledger. So, and then we can query the ledger. So when the chain code is installed, we can call this uh, uh, initialization. And uh, with this initialization, uh, the, uh, some sample data will be installed. And that's, uh, that's the, 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 inform the, the, the command which we have to use. So, but that's a little bit complicated here and that's everything uh, in one line. So, uh, that's the reason why I, I have here split it this uh, to see what the single commands are. And so, as we have seen before, when we can call the peer command and with peer chain code, so we can call uh, the chain code. And that's a different between the 2.4 version. So we don't need the CLI container. But in the CLI container, we also have to use this environment variables. Yeah. And uh, but this peer com but this peer command is uh, in the when we look here um, we have seen this here yeah, and here and this peer command so and we can call this uh, directly from our position here but but for this mm, we use. Uh, some uh, we create a shell script where we can uh, put in all environment variables which we need. So we take this so and store it. So and 
I think most environment variables uh, speak for itself. So what is needed is the fabric uh, config path. So, oh, and you see here, ha, we have to be a little bit careful. So we have to change this. So we have missed the fabric folder. And uh, so that's an environment variable uh, where Felix knows where the config directory, so where the favorite sandbox, where the config directory is. And uh, the channel name is uh, my choice. So uh, you can put in here um, also the channel name directly. So, but you can set an environment variable for this. It, it doesn't matter. And then we have some peer comma environment variables. So, and that's because uh, the basic, uh, this default network has uh, TLS enabled. And when TLS is enabled, we have to provide some environment variables. So, and uh, you can see here this TLS enabled is true. And then the TLS uh, root certificate. And uh, we can take this as it is. Uh, and uh, important is here maybe the local membership service provider ID. So that means that we create a file for the organization one. And that means of course that we are from the organization one. And this, this, uh, represent, this represents the local MSP ID. So org one MSP stands for the organization one. And also the peer address is uh, local host uh, and this port number. So, and uh, this is an, an information we can uh, find in the Docker Compose YAML file or in the, in the PS command, in the output from the PS. So, and these are the, the, the environment variables which we put in this file. And you see here uh, some paths. So then you can, for the first time here now, you can say that's okay. So it doesn't matter what it's for the moment now. And then we store this. And then we have to execute this file. So, and now we should check if this environment, uh, environment variables are set. And then we can send that core, for example. And you see it's the same like we have uh, done by the path. And you see, okay, now these are my environment variables which I have sent. So I have used this channel name. So I'm going to look for the water channel name. And you see the channel name is channel one. So this should work. And now we have to invoke this uh, and we call a function uh, in this ledger here. And uh, so for this, I would like to show you a short uh, moment. So can you see this uh, Visual Studio code? Thing? So expansion, change code, change code, not work. So, and uh, this is the chain code. And in this chain code, we have different functions. And you cannot, you can only call these functions. So when you want to query something from your uh, blockchain, from your system, and then you can query a function in the chain code. So you cannot uh, make an ad hoc query. Uh, or you can kind of get an ad hoc information uh, from the system. So you need the function for this. And, uh, and this depends on the chain code. And uh, this is the, 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 the global picture when you think that uh, when we have this chain code and we, have, we need in the new lifecycle management or governance process, when we have to improve this chain code, the administrator from organization one has to improve this chain code. The administrator from the organization two has to improve this chain code. And when they improve uh, this chain code, they approve this chain code, then they can say, okay, this is the chain code 
uh, we are conform with this and we take this chain code. So they can inspect this chain code and say, okay, in the first step, we do this in a this uh, in a process and uh, and we see we have here asset one to asset six so these are the assets these are the ids and then we have different uh, uh, properties here in the in the field so yeah and this is the function we are going to use and when we call here this when we look this one so and then the invoke command has a lot of uh, commands here. So, but it's, it's not so uh, complicated. So we need an orderer. So for the invoke, we need an orderer that we can handle this uh, transaction. So in the orderer, this is the address of the orderer, as we have seen. And then because we use, the T, we use TLS, we have to uh, override the TLS host name with the order example.com. That's the name uh, for, for the TLS certificate. And we have to use this TLS uh, uh, command that says that TLS is uh, basically enabled. And when we have this, we need this TLS certified uh, certificate we need the path to this CLS certificate and uh, that's all for the TLS part here and uh, then we need a channel name so okay we call a chain code in a particular channel and in this particular channel we have installed a chain code so so that's like a path so when you call something then you have to say which channel so channel one and on this channel, we have a chain code installed and the name of this chain code is basic because that's the default name of this chain code. And that's the path. When you don't use TLS, you don't have to, uh, you don't need this uh, free parameters. And then we have to tell the order or the peer uh, something about uh, our um, infrastructure. So when we do it by hand, so we don't use a discovery service or something like this. So we have to, because the default endorsement policy says that the majority, so when we have two, the majority is two. So one is not the majority of a two uh, organization system. Then we, the peer command here has to know what are the peers. So our peers is the peer on localhost uh, here and the second peer is the localhost on this part and they communicate over the port over the part numbers here and then uh, this represents the organization one the tls root certificate from the organization one because the the the, the request uh, is uh, uh, encrypted with tls here and the same is here for the organization two and uh, that's why because we have we need confirmation for this transaction for from both from the majority of this system and we in the system we have two organizations and the majority of two is two so we need this uh we need this both peer organizations um to uh to be confirmed that we can uh, invoke this transaction and then and that's the the final part so with the c here uh, we can call a function we call it the function init ledger and init ledger is the function in here so and then this will be called and we'll see a little bit later here when we query this ledger so you you have the same here you have here uh, a name uh, get all assets so and then you can see okay that's the name uh, here, uh, get all assets. So, so. And that's all. And when we copy this now and uh, paste this, then you see chain community. You see here in the, in the panel above, the blocks are created here now. And uh, when we're going to query this, so then we can 
call the peer chain code command, not with the invoke, because we don't want to make him, uh, uh, an order uh, action to, to start an order action. So, and uh, when we query something, then we query only a specific organization or a specific peer. And then, and, 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 and which we are going to query, uh, it depends on this environment variables. So when we change this environment variables to org2 MSP and the corresponding paths here, uh, then we can query the second uh, organization with this. So that's in this simple scenario, it's simple because uh, both organizations are running on the same machine. So in a real scenario, I think this is not a real scenario. So when we have a real scenario, then we will have uh, the organization one in the first data center and the organization two in the second data center. And we have connected these two networks, maybe over Docker Swarm or other overlay network techniques. So, and, uh, but here in this test scenario or in this trainings environment, we can switch with the environment variables and then we can query different organizations. And uh, yeah, and when we, now we can look what is the, uh, what we have here and you see you can when you query this get all assets so your response is a JSON format uh, which we pass to the JQ uh, parser and, and we see here this uh, uh, nice output and we can query uh, a particular asset so when you say the asset one or the asset two so when you say here the last one is the asset six. So let me change this to asset six. Let me copy this. And you see asset six, uh, color white, size 15 owner, Michelle, and a price value is uh, 800. And, and that's the difference between an invoke command here yeah, and the query command here. So, and but it, we can create a diff, completely new asset. Yeah? And for this, we call a particular function in the chain code. So we cannot create an asset uh, if there is in the chain code, if there is not then create asset function. So, and that's the band depends on the chain code container, which functionality is um, implemented here. And so, it doesn't matter what the chain code here is and how this works. So the only important part here for now is that we know that uh, we can only query or invoke only function which are implemented in the chain code. And that's the reason why the chain code um, developer or the, maybe also the, the backend developer from the, from the Node.js SDK has to know which functions are available and which uh, they can query with his Node.js, with the Node.js SDK. And also the operator, the system operator, when they try to test something, um, they, ha they have to know what is uh, implemented. And uh, so, and that's the reason why it's important to look into the chain code and see what is this chain code for, which methods are implemented and how we can use this. So, because the function name is the one part and then we have arguments. So, and all arguments are delivered to the function through and string array. So this is, you can see here. So, and uh, when you call a function, then you have here the function. So here you have the fun create asset, then, and then you have arguments and these arguments is a string array, so also integers here yeah, are string arrays. So also here, uh, when you have double or floats, so when you have other uh, prim primitive types here, then you because that's uh, I think that's the reason is why it's a JSON structure and this has to be strings here. And then, but in your chain in your chain code, you can convert this then to an integer or to a, 
uh, with whatever you want. So, and you can have here also uh, objects. So when you have, when you look like this, this is an asset. So, and in the Golang, you see here, this is a struct. So an object with these properties, and you see here that this is the internal uh, name, and then you have here the JSON uh, representation, which uh, is used from JSON. You know? And uh, but when we see here, when you see this is this this not the image ledger. So what I have mentioned uh, earlier. So and when we have here the put state, so and that's that's the key and the value. So yeah. and that's the in the end we have in this blockchain um, an asset. The asset is the ID and uh, the asset JSON here. Uh, that's the value from this. And that's the reason why it's so important to see what is in the chain code and uh, how we can call this in, in this way. So, okay, let us create fast a new asset. So that's the asset seven. So, and you see asset seven is created here. And then, um, print it. So and now we are ah that's we are on organization one. When we query this again, so I will show you in this way. So we query this again. So and look at this here. So when we see you see the query finished chain code basic. You see the query here is PSU organization one. So now our query command has used the peer one, ah, uh, the peer zero from organization one to query this information. And uh, now we are going to change this. So we make the same uh, file organization two with the right environment variables. So, but with the change here. So, and here you can see that's basically the same like in the organization one uh, file, but here we have organization two membership service provider ID. And we have also uh, the changed paths to the organization two, yeah, PSO organization two, TLS uh, certificate, uh, and here to the administrator. So the member membership config path, that's important path for us. So. Fabric is a permission blockchain system. And the question is, uh, what does the uh, permission mean? So or where the permission came from? And uh, that's the reason. So here, the admin is an admin is needed to do some things. And uh, this is the membership service provider path where all the certificates are included from the admin. So and we work here as the user admin at organization2example.com. So and then we call this. Now, when we look at the core command, we see this is changed. So, and with this environment variables, when we call now the same command like before, this one to read the asset seven. So the peer command will use this environment and variables is here yeah, to query this chain code. And here you see the query is now on PSU organization two example.com. And now we have changed the situation. So now we have created organization two. And uh, you see, uh, we have the same information back than before. Yeah, so, and then, Okay, the time is uh, a little bit uh, is flowing away. So I think um, the transfer and asset uh, chain code 
invoke command is uh, basically the same like the update, but it has only limit a limit functionality. So it changes only the name of uh, the asset seven. So we can do this, we call this. And you see here the owner uh, is Roland. And now the owner here from this, you will see is Joanna. So, and what, what, does, what, what that means is that we have updated now the world state of this asset seven and we have one uh, we have two versions from this asset asset uh, seven version one is the original version it's this one and the version two is uh, asset seven with this one so and in this scenario we we, we don't see this uh, so easy so but uh, when we use maybe couch tv to this, so we can uh, start the network with CouchDB. Then we will see in the in the CouchDB administrator tool. Then we can we can see very easily the versions, and then we can see that the version number is increased to one, and so we can see that's not the original version; it's the version uh, in uh, a further version. And uh, I think um, in the in the one point one for version to query the history. So the, uh, that's a functionality which is provided to the SDK or from the SDK. And um, I don't know, but I think uh, it's the same um, in the version 2.2, but I'm not sure, uh, but I think that uh, must be the same. So when we are going to, to, to query the, the history, then we, I think we have to use the uh, SDK for this. So that's, I think that's not possible to the, from the CLI. Like. And okay, so, and then the delete, I think it's the same, yeah. But the important part here is that you have here the call the function, yeah, with a function name, and you have an argument. Um, this is a, a JSON structure. So this command is always a JSON format. And uh, we have here two elements in, so we have a, chasing with the key function and the value transfer asset. It's, it's, and that represents the function name in the train code. And then we have an argument which is called args and that represents a um, string array. And then this string array, we can uh, deliver some information inside the transfer asset chain code function. And then the chain code has to grab this and uh, have to work with this. So and you see, uh, we have the new owner and then, yeah, so. But I think you got the idea. So uh, for now, it's important to see, uh, this is the chain code, the chain code is working and uh, how we can call different functions from the chain code and yeah so and then um, we can leave this um, the cool thing is that when we use tmox this terminal multiplexer we can uh, detach uh, from this session and you have here uh, a running tmox session so, and then you can uh, leave this machine uh, and when you come later back, you can attach or reattach to the session again. And, and you have uh, all this, everything is in place. So you can do your queries again and the thing is working. So, no. Okay. And finally, uh, we can bring down the network. So, and that's also a good thing. So when we call the down command network uh, from the network script, then everything is closed. All Docker images 
um, deleted. We call Docker PS. You see nothing, nothing is running. And Docker PS uh, um, A, and you see uh, also no expired containers are running or broken containers are running. Uh, also in the Docker network, uh, you see uh, there is no the Docker network, the default Docker network is also replaced. And also the um, volumes, when we call the Docker uh, volume ls command, and you see no volume is here. So that means your blockchain is gone, and, you, and when you start it again, uh, you can um, start with a completely new uh, version and try a different configuration. So I think that was for my side. Um, if you have any questions, please ask, ask me. Um, write your questions in the Slack channel or in the uh, chat here. So, and then I hope I, you have seen a little bit from the new version and um, Feel free if you have any questions now, then you can ask. And if not, uh, I, wish, I wish you um, a good learning week or good two learning weeks. So, and then the next week, uh, we are going to uh, look a little bit deeper in this uh, installation process and especially in this new life cycle uh, process where we can achieve this uh, chain code governance which is the, which is new and uh, one of the new features of free. So that's from my side. Thank you, Roland. Really informative. Thank you.